What's up YouTube, my name's Alex Bowman and I spent 11 years as a Navy fighter pilot. Now, over the years, I've received a ton of questions. How to become a fighter pilot? Which commissioning source is best? Which commissioning source gives me the best odds of becoming a fighter pilot? Now, you'll hear all kinds of stuff about the number of pilot slots available based on commissioning source. Which source is best? Let's talk about it. The first thing we need to know about becoming a fighter pilot is that you need to commission as a naval officer. In order to commission as a naval officer, you have to have a four-year degree. Now in this video, I'm going to highlight the three main commissioning pathways for unrestricted line officers. Now when I talk about unrestricted line officers, I'm talking about warfare communities that can hold command at sea, those being surface warfare, submarines, aviation, and special operations. There are other commissioning pathways, but those are not the commissioning pathways that you're going to take to become a Navy fighter pilot. That being said, which commissioning source is best? The first commissioning source we'll talk about is Service Academy. And when we talk about Service Academy, we're talking about the Naval Academy or the Air Force Academy, academies like that. These are institutions that are service-led and ultimately provide a four-year education and a commission at the end. The advantage of these service academies are fully paid for. You get a four-year education for free, room and board's paid for, plus you get a monthly stipend. Additionally, they're pretty prestigious schools, so you have the honor of graduating from a service academy. Additionally, there's a ton of military personnel around with a lot of experience you're gonna hopefully be able to find a mentor who can kind of guide you through this process. Now, the next commissioning source we're gonna talk about is the Reserve Officer Training Corps, also known as ROTC. Now, ROTC is actually the commissioning source that I went with at the University of North Carolina. ROTC provides a normal education, a normal university setting, with the affiliated ROTC military training. And that affiliated training involves a one to two week in-doc training prior to freshman year, along with weekly lab requirements, such as wearing your uniform at least once a week, drill, general military training, naval science classes, etc. Now the advantage of ROTC is it affords you a normal college experience while also paying for school. The other advantage of ROTC is it affords you more freedom than a service academy. You're not fully immersed in the military experience 24-7. So the next commissioning source we're going to talk about is Officer Candidate School, also known as OCS. Now this is a 13-week course out of Naval Station Newport in Rhode Island that is specifically for after you've earned a four-year degree. Now, the big advantage of OCS over the other two commissioning sources we've talked about is you can go into OCS with a guaranteed pilot contract. And this is huge. Prior to going to OCS, you can actually have a guaranteed pilot spot lined up for you at the end of OCS when you commission. Now, in order to do this, you have to talk to an officer recruiter and you have to ensure that you get that paperwork signed prior to going to OCS. Now, the advantages of OCS are you can have your normal college experience, and then after you have that experience, then you can go to OCS and commission as an officer. The disadvantage of OCS is you're not capitalizing on the benefit of having school paid for by the Navy, and that's a huge benefit. The other disadvantage of OCS is you have to wait until after you graduate to attend OCS. So at a service academy or an ROTC, as soon as you graduate, you're commissioned, you have a job, and you start flight school. So if you're in a hurry to get to flight school, ROTC or a service academy is the way to go. Now the other two commissioning sources that we'll talk about are specifically for enlisted personnel, and that's Stay 21 or the Seaman to Admiral program and the Enlisted Commissioning program. Stay 21 is specifically for enlisted personnel who may not have any college classes done. They're able to go affiliate with an ROTC program, get classes done, and then commission. The enlisted commissioning program is more for enlisted personnel who already have college classes completed or potentially already have their degree, and they can take that avenue to becoming an officer. 
That leads us back to the question of which commissioning source is best. Well, it really depends on your personal scenario. If you're in high school and you're contemplating becoming a Navy fighter pilot, or maybe you've already made up your mind that this is the avenue and this is what you want to do, then I would highly recommend a service academy or ROTC. You're going to apply for those in your junior year of high school. Now, if you're already halfway through college or closing in on your senior year of college, then best bet at this point is to take a look at OCS or Officer Candidate School. You can go ahead and knock out that 13 week training after you graduate and commission and start flight school. Now, the other thing I wanted to address is what we briefly mentioned at the beginning of the video about the number of slots afforded to each commissioning source. It is true that there are a designated number of slots available for service academies, for ROTC, and for OCS. But the focus should never be on the number of slots. And really, your odds are not any better doing one commissioning source or the other. It's really broken down into percentages based on the number of people who go to a service academy and the number of people who do ROTC, etc. I'm fully confident that if you want to become a Navy fighter pilot, that you can do it with a little bit of self-discipline and hard work. Really, the keys to success are staying out of trouble, doing well in school, and staying physically fit. If you can do those three things, then there is no reason you won't be picked up for a pilot spot going through either ROTC or through a service academy. And while you do risk the chance of being selected for a different warfare community when you attend either a service academy or ROTC, I believe the benefits of a free education greatly outweigh the chances that you will not be selected for a pilot spot. I hope you found this video useful. I'm going to drop a link in the description below highlighting those commissioning sources directly from the Navy. If you have any comments, questions, concerns, or suggestions for future video content, please let me know and I'll do my best to entertain it. Thanks. See ya.